Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Mariela Salinas, and I'm a marketing specialist here at Educate360. Welcome to today's webinar, Intro to Azure AI, presented by our excellent instructor for today, Tom Payne. We are in Zoom for today's session, and we will be sharing a copy of this recording with all of you in an email after the webinar. We do encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use the chat or the Q&A option for our short Q&A portion after the presentation. Educate360 is so excited to present this webinar today. Without further ado, I'll now hand it over to you, Tom. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence, and in particular, some of the Microsoft Azure artificial intelligence offerings that you can use to enhance your business. So we're gonna start out talking about just an introduction to artificial intelligence, understand the concepts behind it and how it fits in to the modern technological era that we live in. Uh, we'll also talk about some of the specific solutions that Azure has to offer and the ideas that, that you can get access to AI capabilities without having to code it all yourself or to hire some MIT graduate or to, you know, get a, a physics master's degree. And you can do this. It's something that anyone can sign up for. And in topic three, we'll talk about some of the latest developments that Microsoft is in integrating with Microsoft Copilot. Uh, it's called Generative AI. We'll explore that a little bit as well. So to start out, let me just say that every business, every organization, every government agency, every nonprofit, they all exist to deliver value, delivery of value to your customer, to your citizens, to whoever depends on your organization. And the more value you can deliver, the more you will thrive, the more you will succeed. If you cannot deliver value, then you will struggle, you will go bankrupt. If you think of some big companies from the past that aren't so big anymore, like America Online or Toys R Us or uh, Blockbuster Video, Kodak, these are all companies that did not quite make it because new advanced technologies came along and they, they didn't quite adjust to it. So as artificial intelligence becomes more and more a part of what we do, if you are not on board, you're gonna get left behind. Imagine being a company in the 1980s that didn't adopt computers or in the 90s, if you didn't adopt the internet. In the 2000s, it was smartphones that came along and we all do work on our smartphones for, for work now. Um, you know, If you didn't adopt that idea of having your employees on smartphones then you can't get as much value delivered to your customers. In the 2010s, it's been the cloud. If you aren't using cloud this or cloud that, you're probably paying more than you should be. And now in the middle of the 2020s, it's machine learning and artificial intelligence. And it's, it's time. It's time to get on board. And if you don't adopt these technologies as well as your competitors or as well as you should, then you might go the way of Kmart and CompUSA and companies that used to be huge, but they, they didn't quite keep up. So what is artificial intelligence? Computers have been really good at math and programming and things like that for a long time, but there are some things, um, there are some things that computers have not always been very good at compared to humans. For example, do you remember when computers always sounded like this? That computers weren't as good at talking as we are. Computers were not as good at art. Computers were not as good at language. I got a degree in German and I thought, oh, I could always be a translator because computers will never be good at translating. They are. Computers are really good at translating nowadays. So artificial intelligence is when you have a computer doing things that human intelligence is kind of required for. Recognize if, if I showed you a picture of something, could you tell me what it's a picture of? Computers didn't used to be very good at that. Um, humans are really good at looking at, at trends and patterns and predicting what's going to come next. Um, recognizing something that's out of, out of the ordinary, or unusual. Um, you can show a toddler 
pictures of dogs and pictures of cats. And then before you know it, they know what a dog and a cat is. You didn't have to like tell them, oh, see dogs have these features. You just show them a few pictures and humans can learn to recognize things pretty quickly. Humans are good at language. I can not only speak, but the words that I'm saying, you can hear and understand. You can make meaning of these noises that I'm making with my mouth. That's pretty amazing. Computers are good at that stuff now where they never were really good at it in the past. So artificial intelligence is essentially uh, computer mimicking human capabilities. So big data becomes a part of this. Computers are really good at processing a lot of data. So let me give you an example. If you're a grocery store and you stock milk for your customers to come buy milk and you're competing against other grocery stores, if you have too much milk and you can't sell it all, it expires. What do you do if you can't sell all your milk? You dump it down the drain. You're dumping value down the drain. So, well, let's not order so much milk, right? I don't want to dump value down the drain. If we don't order as much milk, then we might sell out. And customers come to our grocery store and we don't have milk. What do they do? They go to our competitor and they buy milk from them. So if we don't have enough milk, value's walking out the door. If we have too much milk, value's getting dumped down the drain. So getting the exact right of milk, right amount of milk on the shelf, that is key to being a successful, thriving grocery store. So how do you know how much milk to, to purchase, to order, to, to put on the shelves? Well, you look at the data, right? Well, we've been running for five years and I can tell you that milk normally we sell about this much, but you know what? In the summer months, in the winter months, when the weather's good, the weather's bad, when you know it's a holiday weekend versus a non-holiday weekend, if we can take all that data, we can get pretty good at getting the right amount of milk, but there's so much data. Humans aren't very good at dealing with massive, massive amounts of data. That's where computers are really good. So if you can combine what computers are good at, like dealing with all the data and what humans are good at, recognizing trends and predicting things based on patterns and making decisions, then we can get the right amount of milk on the shelf and we can deliver the most value that we can. So, um, now, let me, let me go back to this slide real quick. The AI can help us make a decision, right? Insights for decision-making, that last bullet point down there says we get insights for decision-making. If we're letting a computer make decisions, then we have to start thinking a little bit about what if the computer makes the wrong decision? What if a computer makes a decision that hurts someone? What if the computer makes a decision that's biased and that's, you know, not representative of what we really would have done if we were making the decision. So when you start adopting artificial intelligence, you have to think about some of these ethical considerations as well. So Microsoft, just a quick story, they, they had an AI chatbot back in the days that they decided in order to teach the chatbot, let's have it just be on Twitter and it can learn how to interact with people because people interact on Twitter all the time. So they put this chat bot on Twitter and it only took about a day for the trolls and the Twitter crazies to turn this chat bot into a racist biased jerk. And Microsoft had to take it down. So Microsoft has learned that, okay, we can't just unleash AI willy nilly. We've got to think about ethical considerations. So, let me show you this link here. I'll send this to you. Microsoft has really thought a lot about the ethical considerations. Post this link in the chat window. Uh, I believe a recording will be available later. I have to double check with Mariella on that for sure. But Microsoft has this page that's all about responsible AI. And they have some principles down here of fairness, reliability and safety, privacy. Sometimes AI might figure things out that should have been private. How do we handle that? Uh, inclusiveness. If AI is coded by a bunch of white guys, maybe it's going to make decisions that are not very favorable to, you know, indigenous females or whatever, right? So you got to think about that. Transparency. Sometimes the AI will make a decision and it's hard to figure out why did you, why did you choose that? So we need to have ways to, to get that out of the AI as well. And accountability. Is this not sharing? 
Let me stop my screen share and try this one more time. Apologies, everyone. How about that? So thank you. I, I totally thought I was sharing this with you. So this, this is the link that I just posted in the chat window. And uh, this is Microsoft's responsible AI page. So when you start incorporating AI into your business, you just need to think about what if the AI makes a bad decision? What if the AI is biased? What if the AI... So you need to just make sure that you might still want some human oversight before you just let AI make, make problems. You know, it's like hiring someone. If you hired somebody who makes bad decisions, that looks bad on your company. So the AI is just like somebody that you need to keep an eye on. This call may be monitored for quality control, right? Because we want to make sure our, our tech support agents aren't saying crazy things. We need to keep an eye on our AI a little bit as well. All right. Thank you for letting me know that the screen share wasn't quite working. Hopefully everything's in order now. Okay. So what can Azure do for us? Well, you could go to Harvard or MIT and you could get a, a computer science degree focused on artificial intelligence and then you could start programming stuff, but you don't have to. Microsoft has already hired all of those people, not all of them, but Microsoft's hired a bunch of really, really smart people and they've coded AI workloads. It's what Microsoft calls it. It's things that AI can do for us. So some of the things that are just easy to subscribe to in Azure include machine learning capabilities. And machine learning makes predictions based on data. Computer vision capabilities. Computer vision is the ability to, that link that, that I did post to the chat, let me post it one more time, make sure, hopefully this gets to you. Did that go to the right group? Let's try one more time. I'll post it a couple times. All right, um, computer vision means, let me give you an example. Uh, if you're a car insurance company and somebody gets in a car accident, we need to decide whether that car is repairable or is that car just considered totaled. And so car insurance companies that are nationwide might have insurance adjusters in every city and every state across the United States so that they can send a person out to make that decision. Well, what if we just had our insurance customer take some pictures of the car and submit it? With computer vision, we can have an artificial intelligent computer look at the pictures and maybe it can already tell that's totaled or that's repairable. And when we have a picture and we submit it, computer vision can tell us, hey, this the milk is running low because we have a camera watching the shelf. Computer vision can tell us, hey, that picture is inappropriate for whatever. We can have computer vision make decisions and help run our company with a lot less manpower, right? A lot faster, more automated, more accurate, honestly. And, you know, the car insurance example, if the computer vision AI says this car is totaled, it can also give you a confidence rating. Like I'm 98% confident that that car is totaled. And then maybe we don't even need to send a, a human out to take a look at it. That saves us time and money. If, if the AI isn't so confident, hey, that car looks totaled, but I'm only 68% confident, then maybe we could send a person out to make the final decision. So we can use computer vision to help our factory, you know, kick out bad gears and keep the good ones or, you know, take bad apples and send them to another bin and keep all the beautiful apples and send them off to the store for people. So natural language, we're really good at written and spoken language. All of these little squiggles on the page, all these weird noises I'm making with my mouth, you derive meaning from it. Well, AI can do that too. You can, for example, take comments that your customers are submitting, send it to an AI to find out, is it positive or negative, the comments that they're making? It's called sentiment analysis. And then what you could do is have automatically, if anyone posts something negative about you on Twitter, you could have the bot reply and say, hey, we're sorry you had a bad experience. We want to make it right. And now can you imagine the customer service feeling if, if I had a complaint about something and they immediately tried to make it right? That would be awesome. I would, I would like that as a customer. So natural language processing, we can translate into different languages. We can do sentiment analysis. We can just uh, transcribe 
something, you know, if you turn on closed captioning on YouTube nowadays, most of that is done by AI and it's pretty good at it. Document intelligence, uh, that would be like taking uh, invoices or business cards or receipts. Like, have you ever traveled for work and you have to turn in receipts and you have to fill out a form that says how much the receipt was for? So you have to give them a picture of the receipt and you have to tell them how much it was for and what you bought. Well, AI could do that for you. You send us the picture and it already knows how much you spent and what was what it was spent on and what date it happened on. Knowledge mining, the ability to take all this data and learn something from it. A lot of business decision-making is about, you know, taking in information and making a reasonable assumption and learning from that information. Knowledge mining lets AI do that for us. And then finally, generative AI. Generative AI is the ability for the computer to be creative and generate new things that, you know, creative things, new images, uh, new things like that. So Microsoft has already programmed all of these capabilities into Azure. You don't need to hire the MIT graduate. Microsoft has already done that. And all you need to do is subscribe, subscribe to their offerings. So this link right here, let me send you this one as well. This is Microsoft's official page, kind of letting you know, here's a bunch of the AI offerings that we have. And if I scroll down, I'll see that, hey, They've got search capabilities. You know how Google always gives you the best results at the top of your search? Imagine searching through your documents at work and getting the best results on top all the time. Translation from one language to another. Speech services have verbalized um, you know, language. AI vision, that's where we can go in and, and interpret photos and pictures. AI language, it can understand what I'm saying. Like I could say, you know what? It's really bright in here. And the AI can figure out, oh, that means you probably want me to, you know, dim the lights or something, right? So we can have the AI making all sorts of powerful, uh, customized, automated things happen. And a bunch of companies are already doing AI in different ways. Let's take a quick look at a couple of these. I'll just show you a couple things real quick. If you subscribe to Microsoft Azure, you can go to the homepage, it's portal.azure.com. And you, you have to log in, you have to have a subscription. And at Azure, they offer all sorts of services, right? You can get databases on the internet, you can get, you know, hosted websites, you can get VMs, you can get all sorts of things. If I go to create a resource, they have a whole section for AI and machine learning. And here's where we would subscribe to those various offerings. So if I want to, you know, have AI look at, at a, a video feed and let me know if anyone's violating a security rule, I could do that. If I have photos of things and I want the, the computer vision to be able to recognize our parts versus a competitor's parts or something, we could, we could train computer vision to do that. And what we would do is we would just go to this computer vision and we would go and subscribe to it. So you'd, you'd fill out this little form and subscribe to it. And then you could train it to learn, you know, what good cheese and bad cheese looks like. That way you never send bad cheese to the grocery store again, because the AI knows, oh, that looks bad. Let's not send it. So um, AI is essentially using algorithms. There's a question about what's the difference between an algorithm and AI. Let me just give you an example. If you wanted to teach a computer to recognize oranges and apples, I could, I could program an algorithm that says, hey, look for pixels that are orange or red. Or I could program an algorithm that says, hey, let's measure the weight. Uh, oranges are usually heavier. So an algorithm is more like the human trying to define a set of rules, a set of rules that the computer can follow. Well, with AI, you don't have to try to figure out the rules. Like if I'm, if I'm recognizing oranges and apples based on the pixel color, what if it's a black and white photo? Your algorithm would fail. What if you're looking for dimples or, you know, what if the apple is kind of orangey looking, right? Your algorithm, you're trying to feed it all the rules. With AI, you just show it, hey, here's 10 pictures of oranges. Here's 10 pictures of apples. And you don't have to define you know, this, the specific rules, it just, it'll know, it'll learn. So it's a self-learning thing. I think that's the biggest difference. 
you know, machine learning there that we still use as algorithms under the hood, but that's kind of what I would say is kind of the difference. Let me, let me show you that link I sent you with the Microsoft offerings. Let's, let's show you an example. If I go to the Azure AI vision and I say, I, Hey, I want to learn more about Azure AI vision. They have down here some examples of things that AI vision can do. Uh, let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. They changed the website on me, like optical character recognition. You can take a picture of, you know, nutrition facts and it can read that and turn it into text that you can store in a database or something. Right. Or it can do handwritten stuff as well. If I take a picture of a handwritten note, normally I can click on that and it would show me. Uh, let's see. Let's go to. And they have pricing here. You can read on the pricing. I thought I could just try a couple different workloads here. I'm not finding it. They changed it on me. Uh, it used to be that you could kind of see it in action. Like it can describe photos for you. It can do optical character recognition for you. It can recognize people. Image analysis. Why won't you let me click on that? All right. At any rate, um, the, the idea is you can kind of try it out. They, they changed this recently. It used to be, or maybe I'm just in the wrong place. It used to be I can come in here and I could try some of these things out. Try, try image analysis. There we go. There's, there's an example. And so I can go in and I can say, hey, I want you to be able to remove the background from an image. Or I want you to, to look at an image and caption it. Do you see this image right here? There's, I would say three cows in a field. Three cows grazing in a field. If I click on it, let's see what AI comes up with. A group of cows grazing in a field. That's pretty close to what I said too. This guy, this baseball player, what would you what would you describe that image as? I would say a baseball player swinging a bat or holding a bat. If we look, oh look, a baseball player holding a bat. AI looked at that image. You can even drag and drop your own photos up here and see how it does. So this is specifically the little. Uh, demo where you can see how awesome it is at, at recognizing normal things. Now, by the way, Microsoft has already trained computer vision to recognize normal things. If you were to ask me to tell you the difference between a fuel injector from a Chevy versus a fuel injector from a Ford, I don't, that's not normal. That's something that would need special training, but you can go in and train the AI by showing it. Here's some pictures of Ford parts and some pictures of Chevy parts. And it would be, you could train it to recognize all sorts of things that you want to train it on. And you don't have to like define the rules for it. It can just figure it out. And the cool thing is you subscribe to this. It's so, um, it's so easy and you, you get a lot of value out of that. All right. There are some Microsoft learning badges. I'm going to send you a link here. I forgot to grab it. It's in my email. Uh, Mariella, if you're there, maybe you can post the link in the chat window. Uh, you can earn Microsoft badges just for attending this little training right here. I want to end with one more demo, and then we can handle any other questions you might have. The last demo I want to do is just to show you, if you go to bing.com, there is built into Bing something that Microsoft calls Copilot. And you can get this in, in Azure, you can get it in Bing, you can get it in Windows. But if you click on this little Copilot link, you can use generative AI. So I can say, write a rhyming poem about Azure computer vision. All right, I'm gonna misspell it. Let's see if it can handle it. So write a rhyming poem about Azure computer vision. Generative AI is good at being creative, generating unique content. So in the cloud, there lies a sight, Azure's vision, oh, so bright, pixels dance, encoded streams, crafting visions from AI dreams. It sees the world both far and wide in binary waves where secrets hide. Okay, okay, I'm done. You can also ask Copilot to generate code. Uh, let's see, write some Python code to... Um, to generate a random number. Again, I'm misspelling things, and that's all right. It'll figure it out. And what it can do is it can write poetry, but it can also produce code. 
And I didn't have to say Python. I could have said C Sharp, JavaScript. I could make something much more complicated than that if I want to. Uh, you can also tell it, uh, show me, or I'll say generate a picture of a bent paper clip. Right, if I need a picture of a bent paper clip for a slideshow that I'm producing or for some, you know, whatever, it, oh, I have to sign in to do that. But it can generate images. It can generate poetry. Okay, I'm signed in now. Let's do something. You know, you could probably find a bent paper clip on the internet anyway, but I want to do something that is totally unique. You know, show me a duck um, on the moon with a taco. I don't know that you could find that on the internet. So with Copilot, which is essentially tying into some open AI stuff, it's going to generate a duck on the moon with a taco. We'll give it a moment to do its thing. And so generative AI isn't as good at dealing with data and math. Generative AI is good at creating things. So think of it as generally, you know, fiction things. It's not always 100% accurate. But look, we got a duck on the moon with a taco. Bam. Find that on, on the internet. So Copilot is, is amazing. You can generate uh, marketing swag, slide deck, um, you know, verbiage. You can generate code. Generative AI is really good at being creative. And that's all bundled in with the Microsoft Azure offerings nowadays as well. So awesome. It's great stuff. Get on board or get left behind. Thank you everyone for taking a time out of your day to be here. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask now. Otherwise, thank you so much for attending. And oh, that link, Mariella just posted the link. Please go take care of that. Uh, you'll get a little bit of Microsoft credit for just attending this. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tom. I wanted to let our audience know that this is going to be a cute little exclusive, exclusive for attending this webinar. So if you are unable to redeem the badge right now or are watching a recording of this webinar, you can still gain access to the free badge with uh, the link you'll receive in an email after the webinar. So do not fret if you're unable to click that link. We will definitely get you that badge. And I believe we had um, like a couple more questions. You'll get a recording in your email. It'll also be on YouTube. And another question about um, generative AI. Do I need to upgrade my computer for Gen AI? I want to say that's a no, right, Tom? Well, you can you can go to Bing on any computer and get access to that. But if you have Windows 11, then, then if you get the latest updates on Windows 11, then there will be that little co-pilot icon like down on your Windows taskbar and it'll be built in. So it can be built into your computer if you want to update to the latest version of Windows 11, but you don't need to. You can access it online. Excellent. Awesome. Well, I believe that covers all of the questions. Best site. Oh, we actually had one more coming in here. Uh, best site to educate yourself on AI prompts. One more oh, question. I don't know that I have like a, a specific best site for that. I will tell you, if you get good at prompting AI, there's a website called Prompt Base where people sell their prompts and you can make money. If you get good at, at telling AI what you want and getting what you want out of it, you can make money by posting things on Prompt Base. So promptbase.com. Uh, otherwise, I would I would say Google it. YouTube can help, and you know Google articles on it. That's what I would recommend. I love that. That's good insight. Awesome. Well, I will go ahead and close this out so that we can yeah here at thirty. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time, and thank you so much, Tom, for all your amazing insight. Bet. Thank you, everyone. Alrighty, enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye.